morning. It's Thursday, the 10th of August, 2017, and dry. At last, the rain has stopped, boys and girls. My God, how much rain was there yesterday? It started at about six o'clock in the morning, and I, I think it finished just as I got in last night at about um, uh, a quarter to midnight. I've never seen so much rain in all my life. On and all it went. Well, at least my water butts were full up. My water butts, my tanks are full. I'm pleased to announce now, no longer will I have to listen to the constant whirring of my water meter as I try and water my delicate plants. It's the hanging baskets, you see. You have to do those every day, even if it's been raining. Because, you know, because they're quite small, you don't get that much water go into them. So please water your hanging baskets. Yes. On the way to the... Uh, I've got one of those large golf umbrellas, fortunately. So on the way to the swimming pool yesterday... Um, I took that with me. I think I think someone must have left it in a pub. The amount of stuff that people leave in pubs, I tell you, it's unbelievable. Umbrellas is probably one of the most um, uh, left things in a pub. And uh, wherever I've worked over the years, we've got like a stack of umbrellas. You're just going to help yourself after a while. No one ever comes back for umbrellas. Isn't that funny? Mobile phones, yes, they're in there. They don't find the mobile phones, dear. No, people nick them. People need, It always amazes me how stupid people put them on the table uh, and go to the toilet and come back. Have you seen my mobile phone? Did you leave it on the table? Well, I only popped to the toilet for a couple of minutes. Yes, it's gone, dear. They can have that out of your hand as you're walking along the street. The motorcycle gangs. There are certain places in London, certainly, where you should not take your mobile phone out of your pocket and walk along the street like that. They'll have it. Whoosh! They swoop down like a magpie. Ah! 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 I don't know. Ah! I don't know. Do magpies sound like that? Ah! Ah! <laughs> Shall we do it together? Oh, come on! Don't just be sitting there. Oh, look at that fool doing that. Do it with me. I guarantee it will make you feel better. Are you sitting there a little bit depressed, a little bit unhappy at this moment? I was this morning. I was sitting there in front of the telly this morning and I felt quite unhappy. I was missing my cat, missing my cat. Um, so I've come upstairs to try and cheer myself up and you as well, hopefully. If you're a little bit depressed, I want you to put your arms out and stretch like that and make the noise of the bird. Are you ready? Here we go. Now. Ah, 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 ah. <laughs> Oh, dear. Well, what do you want? Radio 4? All serious and miserable? I don't think so, dear. Actually, there's a little thing for you tomorrow. A little thing for you tomorrow. Can you video yourself, uh, if you've got an iPhone, doing that? Ah, 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 ah. And I'll play them out in uh, maybe tomorrow's show or the one after. Hey, eh? Can you do that? Do me a video of you going, ah, 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 ah. I want ten, about 10 seconds worth. OK, and I'll take the bit out of the middle once you've warmed up and I will play those out. How oh, marvellous. That's what we need. More of that sort of thing. Yes. So I've got my golf umbrella out and I walked up to the swimming pool. I still got wet tracksuit bottoms, though. You know, right. At, I don't know if they're dragging on the ground or whatever. Uh, I got rid of all my old trainers. Eventually, I've had I've had trainers be honest with you, they should have been chucked out about five years ago, but I keep them going for as long as possible, dear. I've glued them, I've taped them, uh, but eventually they had to go, and I've replaced them with uh, Ralph Lauren ones, which generally are much more expensive than your um, than your usual Sports Direct stuff. Unless, of course, like me, you wait for the biannual sales. That's that's two, instead. That's two, OK? They usually have a sale just after Christmas and around June, July. <clears throat> and then you get a lot of stuff half price. As I showed you, I showed those trainers the other day. £42, which is a on comparable price to, to sort of... Um, uh, Adidas or someone like that. And these ones are waterproof. So my feet weren't wet yesterday. Whereas they would have been soaking wet with the other ones. So I walked up the swimming pool. Um, it was a little bit busy in there yesterday. We have a, a lady in there called Anne, who I get on well with. Someone must have upset her yesterday because she was splashing like there was no tomorrow. And she was doing it on the f family side. I think she was trying to make a point. 
You see, we have two sides to the swimming pool, which is up at the Hilton Hotel. There's one side, which is like family, people that don't really swim, uh, want to walk up and down, perhaps are a bit slow. And there's the other side for the swimmers who want to do lengths. And Anne gets very upset when people are on the swimmer's side and they're going at the speed of a snout. And there were three of them in there yesterday. It's not a massive pool. It's not a full-length pool, OK? But, you know, you've got to keep up at a certain speed. We're not talking Olympic speeds here. You know, like that pretty boy. What's his name? Adam Peaty with the nice body. Similar to my own, actually. I My body is like that. If I was to take my shirt off, you would think I was Tom Daly. You absolutely would. OK, so um, they're going up and down slow. And Adam, uh, Alan was, uh, uh, Anne was getting very fed up. I could tell she was getting fed up. And she was going up and down and splashing like there was no tomorrow with her legs. All these people. They shouldn't be in that side. I can't get up and down and do my lengths. God's sake, man. So that was a swimming pool yesterday. Came back, uh, had some lunch, cleaned the rest of the carpet up here because I've got a Vax carpet cleaner, which I've had a few years now. It's a great machine, I tell you. It really is. It's not that hard either. It's not like the old ones where you really had to work hard to get the thing damn thing working. It's like an upright hoover. And then you you, you pull the, hand, the thing back, the two buttons. You turn on the sucking button. The sucking button and the, the brush button. Like that. If you don't want to brush on, you don't have to turn that one on. So that's going up and down. And you push a button and liquid comes out and squirts all over the carpet. And you let it go and pull it back again. And you can see, you can see all the white stuff being sucked up out of it. Oh, it's wonderful. And it don't give up until it's got every last drop out, dear. Very, very good and dear. In indeed. Push it forward. Push the button, out comes the spray, pull it backwards and... <laughs> and you do that a few times. And and it, and it cleans the carpet. It's very good. Actually, I've got to be honest, the, the carpets up here are not really dirty. I mean, the water was slightly, slightly dirty, slightly, very slightly. But I don't, I generally don't wear shoes upstairs at all. I take them off before I come up the stairs. I do in the living room. I think if, I think what happens in the living room is that, you know, you, <coughs> you, I usually take my shoes off at the front door, uh, but sometimes, I don't know what you're like when you leave the house, you know, to go to work first thing in the morning or night, whenever you go to work. But I forget things, you know, so I go, I'm, I'm locking the door, walk into the car, oh, I forgot my phone, come back, get the phone, lock the door, no, oh, I forgot my cup of tea. And uh, sometimes, oh, there's something in the living room and I don't bother taking my shoes off before I go back into the living room. So that's the next one that's got to be done, the living room carpet. And I'm ex expecting that to be a lot dirtier than the carpet upstairs. It was it was actually very clean, the water coming out up here, but I think it was worth doing. And it kind of gives it a nice smell. I think they've got some sort of perfume in the carpet, in the Vax carpet cleaner, which is quite nice. So I did that, um, uh, 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 cleaned my carpet, uh, had a little sleep, had lunch. Uh, the quiz was good last night, very good at the quiz last night. If you ever want to join us, King's Head Theatre Bar, every Wednesday night between 8.30 and 10.30. Nice quiz last night. We had seven teams, which was quite good. Um, I was talking to the young assistant in there, the young assistant manager about housing um, and, and and how terrible it is, you know, people trying to buy houses or, or even rent, especially in London. I mean, I do not know how young people survive in London. The rents are unbelievable. <clears throat> uh, to buy a house, well, forget it, mate. Forget it, mate. I, and there just has to come a point where the prices have to start coming down, surely both rent-wise and buying-wise. And I was saying, it, 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 it does make me laugh, you know, when they say, oh, yes, but, yeah, you know, 10% of this new development are going to be affordable housing. And then when you look at it, affordable housing from £299,000, that is not affordable housing, is it? <laughs> I mean, what planet do some of these people live on? How can I? I would struggle to buy a house at two hundred and ninety nine thousand pounds. It's just madness, absolute madness. And there just has to come a point where that people just can't afford to buy them anymore. 
But I mean, how far would the prices then come down? Doubtful that they would become, in, in my mind, in what my mind would be affordable housing. For buying a house, I would say an affordable house has to come under the £100,000 mark, surely. Doesn't it? How does someone on £7.50 an hour ever be able to, on the, um, uh, the uh, no hours, what's that called? The zero hours contracts. How does anyone like that ever, ever be able to, to get a mortgage. Not how can you do you can't. You can't do it, can you? So I don't know how, how they work out the price of affordable housing. That is just a load of old rubbish. That even it uh, old Boris, wasn't it? Boris says, Oh oh yes, yes. Well we've got we've got ten percent of affordable housing there. He's starting at two hundred and ninety nine thousand pounds. Ridiculous. And I, I feel sorry for not just the youngsters, but uh, the older people as well. Um, who can't move with little families, you know, young, young families. They've had a child, they want to buy a house, they look around, oh, I can't afford anything there. It's ridiculous. And wrong. I think it's wrong. So years ago, we got sold council houses. I bought a council house. I bought a one-bedroom flat in Wandsworth. £46,500 I paid for that. It had a heavy discount. Um, what we understood then is that the money that they collected for selling the properties would be used to build more properties for people that couldn't buy them. That didn't happen. What a lot of the councils did, and I'm sure Wandsworth did this, what a lot of the councils did was use the money to cut the council tax so that you would vote them in again. Oh, and you know what people are like. Always go for the cheapest option, don't they? Oh, well, if we vote for them, then we won't have to pay so much council cut. Let's vote them in again. That's, that's what happened there, I think. I'm sure that's what probably happened. Very, very wrong. Very, very wrong. Oh, good. All right, let's say hello to some of the early people who are with us this morning. Morning to the lovely Carl Rex Mawson. Good morning, sir. Hope all is going well in your very, very busy life. Nice man he is. Morning to Wendy, who sent in an email, which I'll read you in a minute. Adam the plumber's there. Morning, Adam. Not so good at the slim as well, Justy, were you, Adam? But never mind. It's only one week, lovey. Do you know where those extra little pounds came from? That's what I want to know. Do you know, Adam, how that, that went a little tiny bit wrong yesterday? Let, let us know. We want, we want to know. We want to know. Morning to Matt Joplin. Morning, Matt. Uh, Rod Brown's there. Says it's too early, but good morning for us. Oh, come on, Rod. What? Quarter to ten in the morning. You say it's too early? You're like one of the teenagers getting up at like 11 in the morning. Matthew said floods everywhere around here. I needed a boat to go to the shop. Well, you know, stop weeing all over the bathroom floor then, Matt. Terrible. Turn the light on when you get up at night. Matt's terrible, he is, he really is. He goes to the bathroom, you know, middle of the night to have a wee, but he don't turn the light on and misses the bowl a lot. Oh, it's, it must stink in that bathroom of yours, dear. Good morning to Ricky Dog. Ricky Dog. Morning, Ricky. Uh, Matt says, will you get a new cat, Chris, or not after you get over it, mate? Uh, no. No, no pets. Absolutely no more pets, Matt. Uh, I miss my little cat. Uh, Katie. I had three cats all together. I don't know if you knew that, Rod, uh, 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 Matt. Uh, there was Tiny. <coughs> she was like a long-haired uh, tortoise shell. There was JD. She was a tabby cat. And uh, there was Katie. So I had three uh, over a period of time, uh, ever since I've moved here, actually. So this is the first time uh, that I haven't had a pet in here. But no, absolutely no more pets. No more pets. No more pets. Plants, yes. Because plants, much like I love the garden, when a plant dies, you dig it up, chuck it over the fence and put another one in, don't you? It doesn't really, you don't think, oh, oh, you know, oh, oh, that daffodil has died. And you you don't kind of really get sad, do you? Eh? You don't have to sp spend a fortune at the debt, you know, the vets. You know, maybe have a, a transplant of another yellow petal as one of them's fallen out. That doesn't happen. 
but no, absolutely no more pets. No, it's it's too um, it's too upsetting when they go. Good morning to Timothy Thomas. Morning, Timothy, who says it takes Kerry and I two and a half hours to water everything each day. Ah, yes, yes. And I've just done the flapping wings thing and it did make me laugh. Did you record it, Tim? Did you record it? Flapping wings. We want you to record. So do this in front of a camera, everyone. Ah, 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 ah. And send it over on as a Facebook private message, if you could. And I'll uh, download those and play them out for you, if, if anyone does it. All right. <laughs> but it does take a long time to water the garden. Uh, I won't have to do it today because of yesterday. But hanging baskets and everything. And everything, you know, it droops like that, doesn't it? So one minute you've got a bird flying. Ah, 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 and then you've got drooping plants like that. And they need their water. They need the water. Um... Uh, oh dear, Adam, no, not if you're driving, dear. Adam's just tried to do the bird impression and has just veered across four lanes of traffic. Well, you won't be the only one. Usually the idiots and the BMWs and the Audis doing that, isn't it? Weaving in and out of traffic. Good morning, Tony Power. Morning, Tony. Aidy's there. Good morning, Aidy. Who says, I once helped someone with their rent payment and deposit. Yeah, I'm sure you did. But you didn't get the money back, did you? Oh, Aidy. Now, that bloke there over there, Aidy, he's got a heart of gold. And often people will say, have you got a tenner? Have you got 20 quid? Have you got 200 quid? And he lends it to them. Does he get it back? No. No. And I've said so many times on this show, and I, I don't want to seem um, as uh, uh, not caring, but my advice to each and every one of you watching this show, never lend anyone any money. In particular, close friends. They're the worst ones. They're the worst ones you can lend money to. <coughs> family, all right. If family asks you for money and you've got a bit and you've got a bit spare, give it to them. If you want to, give it to them. Do not expect it back. Give it to them as a gift. And when you're giving it over, think, well, there you go. There's there's a hundred quid. You know, if it and then in your own mind, don't say it out loud because you won't get it back. <laughs> in your own mind, you say to yourself, well, OK, that that was a gift. If it comes back, all well and good. If it doesn't, doesn't matter. If you can think along those lines, you won't go wrong. But friends, close friends, distant friends, do not lend them a penny. It's unlikely to come back. And all you've got to do is say, look, I'm really sorry. I don't lend anyone money as a rule ever. I'm not. And, and you, you, you can back it up a little bit. Uh, please. I'm not offended that you've asked me, but I'm afraid I don't lend anyone any money. OK, and that's the end of it. <clears throat> and if they oh, well, why is that? Why is that? It's just a rule I've got in my own mind. I never lend anyone any money and it won't be a problem. <clears throat> They soon forget it and life will just carry on. Whereas when you lend people money, you, you'll, be, you'll end up begging for it back and they will hate you and you will hate them and it won't come back. I'm telling you now, never lend anyone any money. Please, please listen to me when I say that, OK? God knows, you know, years ago, I used to have five or here, ten or there. You know, now it would be like 30 quid here, 30, 40 quid there, wouldn't it? You know? as inflation has gone on. But I never got any of this money back. Five rear, ten of there. You know, it just it just goes on and on. I, I definitely pay you back. I really will pay you back. And they don't. And then you see them drinking in a pub. No, never lend anyone any money, please. Never, ever, ever. Tony says, I remember your place in Wandsworth, Crisp. I was, oh, did, did, you, did you come there, Tony? I can't remember now. Did you come there with, um... What's his name? Oh, gosh. Forgotten his name now. Yeah, because we were all quite close friends then, weren't we? Yeah. I remember your place in Wandsworth, Chris. I was offered one as well. But for some reason at the time, I didn't have the confidence to run a place myself. Not sure if I regret that or not now, but I have managed. Um, <clears throat> you, you would have done very well, wouldn't you, really? When you think about it. I mean, when it comes to your home... It's it's not so much a, an investment as your home, is it? But I mean that that's what got me. This is this where I live now is only my second place. I'm I'm very happy here. I'm very happy here. I bought the flat for forty six and a half thousand. No, that's incorrect. No, it's incorrect. Incorrect. I bought the flat. I think it was twenty four and a half thousand from Wandsworth Council. That would have been nineteen eighty. 
Let me think. It, it was after I was divorced. Um, nine, uh, two, one, zero, nine, eight, seven. I think 1987. 1987, 24 and a half thousand. I sold it for 46 and a half thousand and I bought where I am now for 61,000. This this is where I live now, which is uh, this and this place is now worth three hundred and seventy five thousand. But of course, it's not worth three hundred and seventy five thousand unless you sell it. You see what I mean? So this is th where I am now is worth three hundred and seventy five thousand. But it's not because it's my home. <clears throat> and that's the more, most important thing. So that's how I did it. And you probably would have been able to do the same at this point. Tony. I have looked up that one bedroom flat in Wandsworth. And uh, they're going for about 350000 now. The, the same flat I paid 24 and a half. It's ridiculous, isn't it? But as I said, you know, a few moments ago, you know, how do young people ever get on the housing list now? Unless they go out. Now, near my sister, where she lives in Lincolnshire, uh, you can purchase a two-bedroom house with a smallish garden. Not, 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 a, not a tiny garden. Not like on those Lego Len, Land Barra houses. Oh, aren't they ghastly? You know those developments where every house looks the same? I think they're awful. Awful. No, I like a road to have all different sizes and shapes of houses. Not Legoland, Barrett Legoland. And they're all at it. Barrett, Wimpy, um, uh, what's the one for the old people? McCarthy and Stone. Oh, God. How how do they look? Legoland, that's what it is, Legoland. <laughs> with tiny little gardens. Now, you can have a two-bedroom house with garage and garden near my sister in a place called Tattershaw. £90,000. £90,000. They're ex-RAF places. I've got one up there that I rent out. And they're, they're going at about £85,000, £90,000. <clears throat> It's all right if you want to drive three and a half hours down the road to work every day, isn't it? Um, so people do that. They do that, you know. They go and move miles away, sort of in the middle of the country somewhere, and they drive into work every day at five o'clock in the morning. Could you do that? That's the question. Oh, no. <clears throat> you know what people are like. Oh, no. Oh, no, no. No, is it more than five minutes to my place of work? Oh, I can't go. Oh, no, no. Too far. What time will I have to get out of bed in the morning? Will I have to get out of bed before 10 to 9? Oh, no, no, I can't do it. So they continue to live in squalor because they don't want to pull their finger out of their bums and work. Dear me. Uh, good morning to uh, Graham. Good morning, Graham, who says, I'm just drinking my cup of tea. Has to be an Earl Grey. Oh, no, I don't like Earl Grey tea, Graham. I really don't. Graham's trying to be uh, uh, telling me about Twitter. Now, I am on Twitter. Uh, my Twitter is Chris Reardon UK, but I don't get it. I don't get it. I advertise my shows on there when I'm doing quizzes, when I'm doing um, karaoke. But that's the be all and end all of it, really. I, I do not get Twitter. <clears throat> Over the years, several people have tried to explain. They've sat me down and, well, this is this. And I just don't get it. You know, and half the time, it, you, you only see, like, a bit of the conversation. Well, where's the rest of the conversation? You click, click, I can't find it, dear. I cannot get Twitter at all, Graham, I'm afraid. Uh, Ricky says his dad's watching too. Good morning, Ricky's dad. Hope you're well, sir. How's the karaoke going? <laughs> Shania's there. Good morning, Shania. Shania's on the Isle of Wight. She's a little bit depressed at the moment because they've had to cancel uh, certain things on the Isle of Wight. Um, the Ventnor Carnival had to be uh, had to cancel the profession, uh, procession last night, unfortunately, due to the bad weather, which just went on and on. It's really, really shame. But they've got another illuminated procession on Saturday night, haven't you? I've been keeping up with the news on the Isle of Wight. Don't worry, Shania. In case someone offers me a, you know, a, a, a programme on the Isle of Wight, I'm trying to keep up with all the events. Well, you seem to be quite involved in all these events on the Isle of Wight. I've noticed that, Shania. That's good. That's good, you know, the old community spirit getting on there on the Isle of Wight. Good morning to Diane, who says, I get upset if one of my plants dies, especially if I've grown it from seed. Do you have a little funeral? I mean, the only thing is, with a plant... Um, oh, hang on, there's a karaoke job coming here, coming in here. Oh, no, it's in the West Midlands. 
on Fridays. No, we work Fridays. I can't take that one. Um, yes, I mean, when a plant dies, how do you bury it? Because it's already buried, isn't it? Now think about that one. How do you bury a plant when it's died? Because it's already in the ground, isn't it? <laughs> oh, dear. Um, AD says, lenders a tenner, Chris. No. No. Not having a tenner. You're not having a five out of tenner, 20 quid, nothing. I lend no money to anyone, ever. Oh, that's a bit harsh. No, because you won't pay it back, will you? Cheek. Um, <clears throat> oh, come on, Tim, send that in. <laughs> send in your bird impressions. And Tim agrees, never lend what you can't afford to lose is my rule. I, I totally agree with you. Don't lend people any money. Graham says, money is the root of all evil. So give me all of your... I've got no cash, Graham. All my money's tied up in a property, dear. That's what I do. <clears throat> when I get a bit spare, I ring up the bank. Hello, I like to pay a bit of mortgage off and I send it to them. I've got no money in the bank. Not a joke, honestly. Very, very little money in the bank. That's true. Morning to Gustav. Morning, Gustav. Gustav lives on the White City estate. Ghastly place, dear. Really is awful there. But there you go. You know, you cut your cloth, don't you? You cut your cloth. And Gustav wears some very, very strange cloth, which he, 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 he tells us is fashion. He had these lovely dungarees on the other. Was it last Friday? But they didn't seem to fit. The, the, the top bit was all like hanging out like this. Apparently, they were 700 quid for a pair of dungarees. You get something similar from home base for about four ninety nine. Madness, dear. More money than sense. And you would think, you would think with all that money, you'd have a nice place to live. Not on the White City estate, dear, in Shepherd's Bush. Is it Shepherd's Bush it's classed as or Hammersmith, one of the two? Round the corner from the new flats of the White City, of the, white, uh, of the um, uh, television centre flats. They're nice. Wouldn't mind one of those. Imagine living in a little flat which is part of the studio that was once Blue Peter. They should take that off the air now. John Noakes has died, I reckon. Wendy says, I learnt that lesson about money 20 years ago. Lent a close friend some money, didn't get it back until I took her to the small claims court. Oh, just imagine having to do that, Wendy. Never lent anyone any money since. I give it, but I never lend. Do not lend money. <coughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. Adam, what have you sent me, darling? Is it a video? If you sent me a video, I can't, pl no, I can't play that. Di I can't do it immediately, I'm afraid. Oh, hang on a minute. What's this here? This news story here. Oh, you know that good-looking footballer? Now, have I still got him on here? I don't think I have, actually. One minute. Is it that one? No, that's not it. Is it that one? No, that's not it. No, it's not on there anymore. Don't know if I can show that to you. Uh, that's my mum, incidentally. That's my mum there. Um, has the footballer gone? Just a minute. Let me see if I've still got it here. Very, very good-looking footballer. I oh, know I've taken him off. Oh, no, there he is. There he is. One minute, one minute. Is that going to work? There he is. Hang on, let's just, just uh, pull him out there a bit. Uh, transform and fit the screen. There you go. There he is. Oh, hello. Oh, look at that cutie pie face. Oh, those arms and a little cute bum sticking out of the back there. You know that footballer? Well, um, he was going to move, weren't he, for like £90 million? Pounds? And now Liverpool have told him he's not for sale. So he's not for sale. So Liverpool are not selling him to Barcelona. So what I think I need to do, boys and girls, is ask you to send donations. I'd like to buy him instead. I want to buy the footballer. Please, not then. Please send him over now. Sorry, Craig. Send this man over to me now. £90 million. Pounds. I reckon we could do it with about £100 million. So if you could start sending in your money now, and I don't mind sharing, sharing, sharing him around either, if you want. If you want me to share him around, that's cool as well, OK? <laughs> Tim says they bought their house for £21,000, now worth £650,000. You know, Tim, <clears throat> I know you're a London boy and that. You probably love living in London and that. But, you know, if... if well, it probably won't happen, but if you ever got into sort of any financial 
difficulty and you, you sold that out. Just imagine what you could have up in Lincolnshire. You have, have a look. Go on right move, Tim. Go on right move. Type in uh, type in where my sister lives, Woodhall Spa. OK, Woodhall Spa. And then type in, OK, so, six, so if you sold for 650, 650,000, type in 450,000. Give yourself 200,000 to play with, OK? Type in 450,000 in Lincolnshire, Woodhall Spa, and see what you could have for that up there. You pro you probably want to move tomorrow now. I've done it myself. You know, I've typed in two hundred thousand pounds, and wow! I mean, the the land you can have with a bungalow, large bungalow, you know, great big bit of land, you know, a couple of acres around you. You could have horses in there. <laughs> you could you could invite Camilla around, couldn't you? <laughs> like that. <laughs> oh. Tony says, I paid £31,000 for my place 20 years ago. That was the best move I ever made. Oh, so you did buy a place. Oh, OK. I paid £31,000 for my place 20 years ago. That was the best move I ever made in my life, as it took me through very dark days in the housing market on a very cheap mortgage. And I don't have a mortgage now. I own my own place. That's great, isn't it? Isn't that a great feeling <clears throat> when you send off your last mortgage payment? How does that feel? Wow. Oh, it's fab. It's fab. I've done that here. I've done that twice, actually. I've done it here, and I remortgaged this place to borrow some more money for another place. Uh, but that's what I do. I, 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 I chip away at my mortgages constantly. I send them you know, a little bit here and a little bit there, and uh, they've come right down. And if you do that, you save thousands over the years. I mean thousands by, by being able to do Of course not everyone can do that, you know. But if you can, why not? Why not? Gustav says, I'm Kensington and Chelsea, not White City Estate in Hammersmith. Oh, what? White City Estate in Kensington and Chelsea, you mean? Is that what you mean, lovey? <laughs> you know where I live. Jealousy is an ugly emotion. Jealous? Jealous of living next to a busy road? You're having a laugh, ain't you? I'm surprised you haven't gone from cancer yet, dear. <laughs> All those nasty diesel fumes coming out from the buses. Oh, no. Rather you than me, mate. No, thank you. No, thank you. I would be jealous, Gustav, if you lived in a castle on an island in the Scottish Hebrides, on its own. That would make me jealous. Living in a property anywhere in London, keep it. Keep it. So you stay there in your half a million pound house while I'm out here breathing the wonderful countryside. <laughs> oh, dear me. <laughs> uh, I should cremate the plant, Tim says. Do you think so? Oh, it's not dead yet. I've got a couple of um. Hang on, let me get one. I've got a couple of these. Now I'm. I'm not. I'm not sure. I think these are still alive. They've just got no flowers on them at the moment. Look, they're orchids. Look they're, now, the leaves are fully attached, but no flowers. What do I do with these? Actually, someone said you're supposed to put them in a dark place. If um. If, they, if they're not flowering. Now, these... Look, the leaves haven't fallen off at all. I think they're still alive. What do you reckon? Do you know, Tim? I've had no flowers on these for a while. I've got another one for flowers. Orchids are you know, fantastic value for money. You see, a lot of people... Put that over there. <clears throat> and don't buy them in a supermarket. Go to a garden centre. They're much cheaper in a garden centre. You'll pay between five and ten pounds for a nice orchid, right, and you might think, oh, it's, it's only £2.50 for a bunch of flowers in Aldi. Let me tell you, if you buy that orchid, you put it somewhere in the house uh, not necessarily too bright. You don't want it in direct sunlight because they grow underneath the canopies of... Um, of trees in the wild. So you don't want it in direct sunlight. You buy that orchid for £10, that, that, in flower, those flowers will stay on there for anything up to three or four months. Honestly, they're really good value for money orchids. Beautiful. In fact, I'm going to buy one today. 
<coughs> that's made my dessert. I'm going to buy another one today and display it here. I have got one that's slightly in flower. One minute. There we are. There we are. I've got one uh, sort of slightly in flower. It's only, uh, the only thing is it's a little bit small, so you can't really see that, can you? You can kind of put it closer. I'm just going to put it there. So put it there for you so you can see. <laughs> there we are. That's better. You can see the little flowers there. Oh, no, you can't get it. There we are. But it is, it's kind of in my way now, isn't it? I mean, you may now think that that's an improvement, looking at the flower rather than myself. I don't know. But, um, yeah, I might get one today now. Let's put that there. That was from that was bought for me from, from Maureen, lovely Maureen, who comes down to the karaoke. She comes to all the karaoke, you know. She comes Sunday night at the Cams and I in Central Station on Mondays and um, uh, Mondays and uh, Friday nights, which is quite nice. I'm off tonight. I love my nights off. I feel like I'm hardly working. I do. <clears throat> I do Monday night. I have Tuesday off. I do Wednesday night. I have Thursday off. I do Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday night. I feel like I'm hardly working at all. Funny, isn't it? Um, Wendy says I bought a two-bedroom... Oh, Wendy... Oh, you did the council thing as well, did you, Wendy? OK. I bought a two-bedroom council flat about £35,000 up north. Not sure what it would be worth now. We'll have to look it up. Oh, you're Leyland, aren't you? You're Leyland. So actually, probably, Wendy, that £35,000 flat up north that you've got now is probably now worth about £2,000, darling. It, <laughs> it doesn't work the same up north, I'm afraid. It's only down here where you can buy a flat for one pound and it's now worth 25 million. It only works down here, I'm afraid, Wendy. Yeah, I, I wouldn't look it up. You don't want to upset yourself. <laughs> I mean, the flats around here in Bracknell, they, they go for about <coughs> anything from about 175,000 now. Yeah, yeah, and, and as I say, these houses, the ones I'm living in, probably about three, seven, five, something like that. But not, as I say, not worth it unless you sell it, you know, and this is your home. I can't see myself moving from here, I really can't. I love it. It's quietish, you know, it's not too bad to do at all. It's quiet, sitting in my garden, what have you. Um, Tim says, we often look at what we could buy if we sold. You could buy a castle in Scotland from where I'm from. Now, you say that, Tim. Yes, you probably could. I mean, you look at the highlands of Scotland. A couple of years ago, <clears throat> I was I was very, very fed up with the the whole DJ and everything I did, really. Um, no, it was the DJ. It was the D I was really fed up with the DJing. Fed up with people moaning all the time and fed up for working for certain idiots. And I, I was going to sell up and move away knowing that the value of this house would buy me something right up in the Scottish Highlands. OK, I actually looked at a place in Caithness. No, I didn't go up there. I saw it online. It was advertised on Right Move. Just a minute. I bloody hate it when that tea goes cold, don't you? Oh, dear. It was on Caithness, and it was right at the top of Scotland. You know that the bit right, right on the edge of Scotland. <clears throat> and on one side, you saw I think it's the North Sea. Is it the North Sea up there? And on the other side, fields and heathland. Three bedroom dash, little. They bought a little conservatory on the back. One hundred thousand pounds. It was. And you probably would have got it for 85, 85,000. It was lovely. It was lovely. It was on its own up there in the middle of nowhere. Now, a couple of things I thought about might be a bit windy. Might be. Also, in the middle of winter, it, they do have rough winters in Scotland. A lot of snow and that. You presumably would be completely cut off. No one could get to you and you couldn't get to anyone else. So that's that's the thing. And also hospital. <clears throat> you know, say I had to suddenly go to hospital. You know, I got some sort of pneumonia or something like that. Probably be on my own. So that would be the end of that, you know. So there are pros and cons. But, you know, and I thought I, I seriously thought about it. Yeah. Funny, isn't it, really? So, yes, I mean, if you want to leave London, you, I mean, you, you're fine now, Tim. I mean, you, you and Kerry could go anywhere, couldn't you, really? Where you are now, you know, you, I mean, unless you was to d 
to go to Knightsbridge or Kensington where you'd have to pay more. Where you are now, wherever you go, it's going to be cheaper, isn't it? As soon as you move further out, so even slightly out, you'll, you'll find it, you know, oh, that's 50 grand cheaper the further you go. There are some lovely places, though. Really are. Really are. Um, <clears throat> oh, Tim says, I own an orchid hospital. Cut your or orchids down to about six inches, about an inch above a bimp. What's a bimp? Can we do this now? Hang on, I've got a pair of scissors. Oh, I haven't got a pair of scissors in there. What's a bimp? Is that a bimp? I mean, that, is, it, it, see that th is that a bimp? Please tell me so I'll know. I haven't got scissors in there. I don't know. Is that a bimp on my orchid? If so, I'll cut those down. Now, do they need to go somewhere dark? That's the question. I, they do hardly have any water at all, so they just just to cut the drips now and again. That's what I give them. All right. Morning to Stella. Good morning, Stella, who says, better than watching Eamon and Ruth. Oh, well, they're just, I mean, how much weight is that Eamon going to put on? Will someone take him to Slimmer's World? Oh, I've got a picture of me and Linda, who runs Slimmer's World. You ready for this? Check this out. We took this picture on Tuesday. There we go. Me and the lovely, she runs Slimmer's World in Woken. Isn't she beautiful? And she always, she's always in pink of some sort. That is the lovely Linda from Slimmer's World, who we owe. We are giving our pounds of fat to her. Although she hasn't put it on. Apparently, they're, they're looking for people at the moment to become agents. Not agents. No, what is the word they use? Consultants. They're looking for consultants at Slimming World. By the way, there's a phone line open now. If you want to call in at some point, that's fine. If you don't want to call in, that's fine as well. But it's up there just in case you want to call in. 0208144. Oh, no, hang on a minute. I haven't even opened a blooming phone line, have I? Hang on a minute. I've got to wait for that to start up. One minute. <clears throat> it, it, opening the phone line is as simple as me just clicking on something. And then it fires up and... There it is, OK? Phone line open now. 0208 3477 if you want to give us a call. 0208 3477 Linda was fat. Linda was fat as well. And she lost the weight. And she was so impressed, she became a, a consultant. So they're looking for consultants at the moment. I, and I'm watching Linda as she does all her stuff. It's like your own little show, really. So your own little live show. She comes on, hello, everyone. How are you today? And all this. And it's so nice and friendly. It really is going to Slimmer's World. I love it. Every Tuesday I'm there. I'll pass 11 on the dot. Earlier, usually. Earlier. Mm. <clears throat> um, ah, that is a bimp. OK, so that is... Oh, bump. Is it a bump? It's called a bump, is it? Yeah, that's... Right, so if I cut that down... No, you said six inches. What, from the top? Hang on, let me scroll back a little bit. Let's have a look. Um, six inches to about six inches, about an inch above a bimp. OK, so there. So here's my leaves. I'm going to cut it... What's he say? An inch. So about there. Does that look right to you? Both sides, yeah? And I've got another one over there, and I'll try that. But um, did you say to put it somewhere dark or not? Let me know if it should go somewhere dark. Could put it in the airing cupboard for a while, couldn't I? Wendy's going to look at... Yeah, look up the price of your flat, uh, Wendy. Right Move is the place to do. I, I don't know what you've got. So just type, go on Right Move. Type in um, where you live. And then look for a flat that's similar to yours. And you should, you should find it in there. It's very good to, uh, uh, to read that, OK? Uh, good morning to Barbie Leitz, who's with us. Good morning, Barbie. Hope you're well. One of our uh, lovely ladies there. Adam says you should get Linda on your show. Oh, now, that's a, not a bad idea. I could do a little interview with her, couldn't I? Like a recorded interval, something like that. Hmm. <laughs> Stella reckons it's much cheaper and stable to have a gastric bypass operation. No, I don't want people cutting me up unless I need to be cut up. She lost 12 stone. Wow, that's that's commendable, Stella. Well done, 12 stone. Very, very good. Very good. Yeah, Barbie says put it in a dark place. Um, Tim says don't have to be put away. OK. OK. Right, so I'm going to cut those down when I finish the show today. And that would be excellent. All right. Um... 
Right, some stories for you this morning, boys and girls. Morrison's. Now, this surprised me. In the sun, Morrison's is the first supermarket to stop using made-up farm names. Now, I thought, what do they mean, made-up farm names? And when you think of it, for example, when you buy a box of eggs, OK, it might say, from Oakland's farm in Dorset, or something like that. And I got to thinking, yeah, yeah, I have seen that on some, you know, your piece of chicken in there from from I don't know, from Buttercup Farms in in Lancashire, something like that. You do see that, don't you? Well, apparently it's all made up. These places don't exist. Morrison's is the first supermarket to dump the dodgy brands which dupe shoppers into thinking they are real producers. Instead, Morrison's is holding Meet the Real Farmer events today when customers can chat to the people who grow what is sold on the shelves. <clears throat> the supermarket has also vowed to stop giving its own brand products fake farm names. Supermarket customers, says uh, Joe Mannon, are sometimes presented with misleading images of farmers on their food. Well, you do, don't you? You see the farmer with the hat on and it's and like in a pose like this, where he's presumably chucking out seeds and things to chickens and what have you. We believe that meeting our real farmers will see and value that we know where our food comes from. Despite using these British sounding names, the food could produce anywhere. So those eggs are not being produced in a little farm in the bottom of a very posh-sounding Surrey place, and probably in some blooming factory farm place in France. For example, Tesco's sells vegetables from Red Mere Farms, salad from Nightingale Farms, and fruit branded with Suntrail Farms. None of these places exist. Did you know that? Even Marks and Spencers are at it. This is according to The Sun this morning. Lock Muir, L-O-C-K-M-U-I-R, which is where they sell, say, the salmon fillets are from. Guess what? There's no such place. Lock Muir, salmon fillets, doesn't exist. Again, Marks and Spencers, Oakham Chicken. Chicken comes from farms across the UK. Marks and Spencers, Oak ham chicken is, is from farms all over the place. Asda, farm stores, farm stores, a generic own brand label. Often the produce is from abroad. Audi say they have Ashfield Farm. No. Nope. Lidl say Birchfield Farm. Well, I can't believe Waitrose would be lying to me, does it? Marks and Spencer sells 11,000 tonnes of Lochmuir salmon a year, but there's no such place. Consumer do watchdog Witch. Welcome Morrison's... Mo oh, talking of consumer wa watchdog. You know that programme watchdog? It's no good without Anne, is it? I'm sorry. Uh, have you been watching it recently? It, it finished last week. Now, the, the bloke on there, what's his name? He does the rogue traders. You know, I mean, he's, he's all right, but sometimes he gets on my blooming nerves. And uh, the lady in the wheelchair is just too happy all the time. And her and the other lady, I mean... <laughs> How many caps have they got on their teeth? Have you seen the teeth? <laughs> Looks a bit fake to me, dear. Although I will say the other lady, not the one in the wheelchair, the other one, I don't know what the names are. She's got some lovely blouses with, um, not peacocks, the, the pink things. Flamingos. Have you noticed her shirts? The woman who walks around on Watchdog with the microphone. She wears blouses with beautiful... She's got some lovely blouses, that lady. Flamingos. I did look up flamingo shirts. I was going to purchase one myself, but they look a bit like those Hawaiian shirts. And I, You know, I, I think you've got to be of a size and balding to wear a flamingo shirt, a Hawaiian-type shirt, don't you? Um, Organic Farming Group, the Soil Association, said the use of brands of convenience was deeply misleading. Well, you do, you know, when you see these pictures of there, you think they come from a nice place. They probably don't. They're probably stuffed in some little cage. Oh, don't start me on that one, dear. And treated badly. That's why I'm vegetarian, my love. 
That's why I'm vegetarian. Um, <clears throat> Tim says, I contacted one of the farms on a chicken and it, it was correct. It was a complaint. And they sent me a cheque for £100. That's all right, isn't it? £100, dear. What did you do? That was about, That's about half a meal for you, isn't it? £100, Tim. Because he goes to these posh restaurants. I bet he's been to the Ivy a few times, haven't you? I don't go. Out, I hate going out to eat. I do because I'm so fussy with my food, Tim. I'm I'm terrible. I'm really, especially since I've been going to Slimmer's World with the lovely Linda. Let's have another look at her. Oh, isn't she beautiful? If I was straight, I'd be chatting her up. If she didn't have a husband, of course, she just moved apparently. I think she's made so much money from all of us that they've managed to buy a place. But you can, you can become a Slimmer's World consultant, you know. I think it's great fun. It's a lot of work. I said to her the other week, is it like a full-time job? She said, oh, absolutely. She said, um, there's a lot of work goes into it. Because she does four sessions, you know, down in Wokenham. 9.30, 11.30, 5.30 and 7.30. If you go to the 9.30 one, my God, the queue's out the blooming door. It's ever so, ever so busy. Right, I'll read you one more story. <clears throat> and uh, then we'll disappear this evening, boys and girls. Now, you're not safe on a bus anymore. Oh, no. In this morning's Super Saw Away Daily Mirror, oh, swings to the left. <laughs> did, you, did you like that, how I went to... I've, I've just swung to the left. Look at that. I've swung to the left. Jeremy, here I come. <laughs> I don't think so. Oh, does he have a bloody smile? You can't have a Prime Minister who doesn't smile. Even if it's fake. Even Gordon Brown managed that fake smile, didn't he? Do you remember Gordon Brown, Brown's fake smile towards the end of when he got sacked? By the British people. <laughs> so I'm going to swing to the left now and read a story from the Daily Mirror. Look at this. Multiple passengers have been injured after a London double-decker bus crashed into a shop window. During the Russia. Mind you, some of those bus drivers are are just appalling now, don't you think? Never used to be like that when we were on the buses, I'm sure. I don't think they train them now. They just suddenly pull out. The best place is outside King's Cross Station, where there's like a, there's a bus lane there, right? And if you want to turn left, you've got to go in that lane there next to them and in turn, literally, at the last minute, you get to get in that lane. And you'll be indicated, and when the bus went, they just pull out. Dreadful. Dread just pull out. Anyway, uh, the story goes on. A huge emergency service response was launched after the 13-ton vehicle. Well, that could have been, could have been anyone, couldn't it? 13-ton vehicle. I know some 13-ton people out there, dear. It ploughed. I was one of them a few weeks ago. It ploughed through a glass-fronted kitchen design shop, trapping two women on the top deck. They probably didn't notice. I bet they were on their phone. Tap, 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 tap. In, I think, in Honolulu, Honolulu, okay, in Honolulu, they have now banned people from using their mobile phones when they cross the road. Did you know that? There we are. There's a piece of, we should do it here. Should do it here. As I'm walking across the road. <clears throat> One woman, not to be laughed at, a commuter at the back of the bus, described the harrowing scenes of a woman wedged in the front right-hand side. She was screaming for help. There was a lot of blood. So people did get hurt on this. Andrew says he, uh, this bloke, uh, Andrew Matthews, said he heard the roof glass shatter and saw the roof of the shop going through the bus. Christ almighty, dear. Um, uh, one woman was pinned down, shouting and banging on the window for help. Can you just imagine that? Apparently the driver just blacked out. I mean, it could happen to anyone, couldn't it, really, when you think about it? You're not even, sa not even safe now. Not even safe on a bus now. Uh, Reverend Dave, hello to the Reverend Ted, who's, who's now called me a swinger, because I've gone from right, I went from right to left. Let me just bring myself back to the middle here. That's better. Oh, I didn't like it on the left there. God, what was that smell? <laughs> Aren't we awful? We're awful. Stella says bus drivers are trained on theory these days using what can only be described as a video game. Really? I remember seeing learner, but actually, that's a point. You don't see any learner buses anymore, do you? All right, maybe that's because I drive around at night all the time. Do you remember that? I always used to see learner buses driving around, wouldn't you? You know, 
bus not not in operation and it would have a learner sign there and it'd be a bloke or a woman of course driving the bus and uh, someone standing next to them indicating on what to do and what have you which is quite good Ah, oh, Wendy, you're going. I haven't read out your email yet. I'm just about to read out your email. We have an email flooding in from Wendy this week, boys and girls. Who writes? If I can just find this one moment, please. Where is it now? There it is. Wendy wrote this the other day. There we go. Uh, good afternoon. Sat in the car park at work. Arrived early, so I thought I'd pop by and say hello. This uh, she sent in uh, uh, last night, I think it was. Uh, been enjoying watching your shows over the past few days. Uh, Wendy generally is not with us live. She watches the recordings. Don't forget, once we've, we've finished live, it stays up there as a recording forevermore, I think. OK, uh, managing to keep up too. <clears throat> particularly enjoyed yesterday's show uh, when I was talking about MS, which is uh, just just some uh, uh, terrible disease, multiple sclerosis. One of the ladies at uh, Slimming World was diagnosed this, um, as I was mentioning on the show yesterday, and uh, joined Slimming World because she, she got quite big and had difficulty m walking around. And she lost a, a lot of weight, an awful lot of weight. And it, it gave her uh, something to aim for, you know. I think we all need something to aim for. I think in, in, in older life as well, um, if you're someone that's worked all their lives and you're coming up to retirement, you need to get something in place to do. And a lot of people do not look forward to retirement. Otherwise, you know, what what is there? I think I think you could possibly disappear from the planet very quickly after you retire if you've got nothing to do. Uh, my my dad, my dad worked for, ever since he left school, he had a job and then he retired and um, didn't last too much longer, just a few years after that. He didn't really do anything after he retired. It was it was just like, um, uh, like to watch the television a lot. And I don't think that's a good thing. You need something to do. I mean, I'd be all right, you know. I've got, I love my garden, I love doing the garden. I love coming up and talking to you. When, when I talk to you, uh, it, it does... I know, <laughs> I know it doesn't sound it some of the times, but it does require my brain to work a little bit harder than it would be doing if I was sitting down there watching the telly. <clears throat> Before the show, you know, I'm always looking. All right, what I, mean, I, I struggled this morning, actually, with news stories to read you. I did. It's all I, I, I try to pick stuff that isn't too depressing. We could have been sitting here talking about the death of Diana. That's all over the papers or the latest um, uh, King Jing Jong Ping Pong and Donald Donald Trump's um, uh, rowing going on at the moment and the worry of a nuclear war. We could have sat there talking about that. No, instead, I pulled out the story about the farms of Morrison's, <laughs> didn't I? <laughs> Anyway, yesterday we were talking about um, MS. And Wendy says, talking of MS, my aunt lost her life to it. Some people with MS have periods of remiss remission that she didn't. She only lived a few years after being diagnosed. It's a dreadful disease. And as you correctly said, there is no cure. I, I, I didn't think that was right. I saw it was right. Uh, my heart went out hearing you talk about the lady at Slimming World who, who has it. Um, yes, um, but she comes every week. You know, she comes every week. You never hear her mention it. You don't hear her mention it. It was only Linda who read out a little article on Slimmer's World. They have, like, people's stories, and you can write, you can write your story on there. Why, why did you come to Slimmer's World, you know? Well, because I'm a fat bastard. <laughs> but you might, you might want to put that, you know, I was overweight, and I've got this, this. And, I, you know, one of the reasons I went, I, I fear diabetes, I fear diabetes. I know so many people have, oh, oh, you never guess what, Chris, I've got diabetes now. Well, I don't want that. I don't want to have to inject myself all the time, do I? And that's one of the reasons I did it. Didn't want diabetes. And I saw my weight and it was going up. Got to nearly just a touch under 14 stone. And now about one and a half pounds below 13 stone. I've got a little, little bit further to go. Not, not much. I want to be 12. I want to be 12, and at the moment I'm 13, 12 and a half, I think. 13, 12 and a half, I think, at the moment. <clears throat> so this week I lost a pound and a half. Uh, Wendy says, congratulations on your one and a half pound weight loss. I was so happy for you to hear, uh, so happy for you to hear that. 
I know some people say you're looking gaunt. Yeah, a couple of people have said, oh, well, you don't want to lose too much more weight, Chris. I mean, what do they, you know, I don't know. Um, I know some people are saying you look gaunt, but I don't think so at the moment. I have seen you look gaunt. When I first met you at Wembley in 2014, you were too thin then, but I thought you looked great. How, how kind when I saw you in Woking. Um, so there we end. And uh, thank you very much for the uh, email there. All right. So I always try and read the emails out. There was a couple of comments left on the show yesterday by the lovely Simon Keane, who hosts karaoke. Uh, he's moving to London soon, aren't you? I think we were talking about um, TV shows and things. Simon says, I used to love a TV show called Butterflies with Wendy Craig. Oh, she was fantastic, weren't she? And she also did, of course, And Mother Makes Three and also And Mother Makes Five, didn't she? And the Butterflies one, love is like a butterfly. Da, 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 da. And it was hilarious. We used to love it. And it was, she was, um, she was kind of, she was married, but she was also kind of attracted to someone else. And whenever they met, they played that classical piece. La, 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 That one, didn't they? And it, it would cut to pictures of them, you know, holding hands and things like that. Oh, it was great, that programme. Simon also loves Rodney from Only Fools and Horses. Uh, Mr. Chop Chop, good times. I used to go to the laundrette, and we have talked about laundrettes. Uh, Simon says, I used to go to the laundrette and take off my clothes down to my underwear, like my tin brother from the Levi Jeans advert. I wonder how old he is now. Do you remember that one? He looked nice with his clothes off, didn't he? <laughs> Simon also says, I love a good cup of Rosie Lee, Mr. Chop Chop, but you can never get a cup of tea as good as the first one of the day. Oh, you're right. Yeah, that first cup of tea in the morning. Is lovely. Now, I'll probably have another cup of tea before I go up the swimming pool because I'm a bit, bit dry now. I've been chatting for so long. And he says, you never told us about the incident outside Camden Tube Station on Sunday night. I'll save that for tomorrow's show because I've run out of time. And it's time for me to go swimming, my friend, OK? <laughs> Just some final messages before we do. Uh, actually, I'll do the birthdays. And then I'll do your last messages before we go this morning. All right, okay, boys and girls. Uh, happy birthday this morning. How many have we got today? I don't think there's too many. Ah, oh, Stafford Blake is 39 years old today. Happy birthday, Blakey. Okay, hope you have a nice time. Paul Brown. Hello, Paul. He was one of the customers at the Black Cab on Monday night. Swear you, Paul. Happy birthday to you. 30-something uh, today, are you? 30, let's guess, 34, 35, something like that. Happy birthday, Paul. Happy birthday to a, a very nice man, Colin Thompson, 58 today. And Colin was um, the manager and sometimes assist, uh, 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 assist, what do they call it? Temporary manager of a couple of places that I worked at uh, uh, some years ago now. But Colin was always a wonderful and he was such a laugh. Colin was an old school manager. He would sit at the bar and get drunk with the customers. And he he is wonderful. He's not not was. He is wonderful. He's I think he's running a, a, a restaurant now up north. And um I did speak to him a couple of years ago on the phone. Now what is it he's said now? It was something um Oh, that's right, right. Apparently, he'd given, given this meal to, to a couple of people, a couple in his restaurant. And he said, uh, there you go. And the, the bloke called him over and he said, excuse me, this, <laughs> this fish is awful. You know, I wouldn't give this fish to my dog. At which point, Colin said to him, he said, well, your wife seems to have enjoyed it. <laughs> Ah! <laughs> you should try that one. <coughs> try that one, boys and girls. Wonderful man, Colin. I've I've got to come and see you at some. Maybe if I go up to the Highlands on a on a holiday, which is likely soon, actually, then uh, I'll I'll come and find you and visit you, and we'll have a uh, we'll have a cup of tea together. You can you can have your pints of lager, and I'll sit there and drink my tea. Colin Thompson, you're a wonderful man. Happy birthday to you, and I miss you. Fifty eight years old. I really miss you. Happy birthday this morning to Walter Goggins, 39 years old today. Uh, Nathan Chatterton is 29 years old today. Happy birthday, Nathan. Brad James, happy birthday, Brad. 
with a multicoloured background there. Happy birthday, sir. And uh, Graham Barnett today is 38 years old today. So we're we'll singing a song for you, boys and girls. Then I'll do your final messages before we disappear today, OK? <laughs> Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. Happy birthday to you. All right. Okay, your final little lot of messages from the Reverend Ted Woodroff. Uh, they used to say bank managers passed away the earliest once they retired. It would have got all that money, hadn't they? My my cousin actually is not he's not he doesn't work yes he does my cousin works in a bank honestly he leaves like at six in the morning gets back like at eight o'clock at night he's got a lot of money a lovely house but is it worth it is it worth it you know I'm not on enormous amounts of money honestly I'm not a lot of people think I am it's that couldn't be further from the truth I'm on a reasonable wage reasonable it's not massive I've been careful with my stuff over the years. I, 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 you, you're far better to be happier in a job than just go for the money. I really believe that. <clears throat> um, there's uh, some suggestions for the Reverend David for multiple sclerosis. Try CBD oil from Holland and Barrett, which is a cannabis derivative. Oh, it's not a twenty pound, is it? Yes, I think my my um my nephew and his wife, uh, they've got a little severely dis severely severely disabled. Um, little girl and uh, I think they give her a little drop of cannabis oil it's um, I don't know if that helps him or not okay um, good uh, Stella says talking of old TV shows David Hasselhoff just announced today he will be rebooting for the third time Knight Rider with the original car oh can we, uh, can we not have someone young doing these we're fed up seeing these old gits doing it please we want someone nice and young to be doing these programs I could do it I think I should be the next James Bond. Da 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 da. See, see, that's the circles that go across the screen at the beginning, you know, before the music. Well, I got it. Perhaps you didn't. Tim says, if anyone snaps their fingers at you as a waiter, say it would take more than two fingers to make me come. I'm going to leave that there because let's just get. <laughs> Wish I hadn't read that out now. Anyway, that's it for the show today. Thank you very much for joining us, uh, boys and girls. Um, he says, looking around at where he's going to click next. That's it. Let's go over there. There we go. Yes, uh, as I say, that's it for the show today. I might uh, try and go and see the film Dunkirk uh, later on today. I'd really like to see that and uh, give comment on that perhaps on the, the next show. But right now, before I go to the swimming pool, I'm going to make myself a cup of tea and cut down those orchids and see what happens on Timothy's advice. Thank you very much for that, Timothy. Have a nice Thursday. It's it's looking lovely out there. It's certainly better than it was yesterday. That rain yesterday started at six in the morning, and it didn't stop, as I say, until I got in here at around about a quarter to midnight last night. I've never seen so much rain, really, but it's beautiful out there. The sun's out. The sun has got its hat on. Hip, 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 hooray. The sun has got its hat on, and we're going out to play. See you soon. Cheerio now.